Spirit. We give you praise, Father, for the privilege to gather again under the auspices of your Spirit. We thank you because your heart is made up to bless us tonight. And so we labor to align as we file up with the ranking angels of Zion, as we align with the flow and the energy of life. We ask that you look upon us even according to the counsel of your will, that your blessings and your bounties may flow in our direction tonight. Thank you, Father. Take all the glory. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. You may be seated. God bless you. Again, it's a privilege, sir, to be here this evening to bring a brief word of charge. Thank you for the privilege, sir. Thank you, ma. Taught us the word of God. You are also giving us the privilege to learn the use of our spiritual tools as we attain unto mastery by the help of God's spirit like I always say in the days when you are full of age we surround you like the mighty men of David you see the creatures of heaven are looking for an opportunity to invade this service if you have been discerning and sensitive you know that the atmosphere is heavy and robust. Every time we ascend, it looks as if something wants to be punctured in the spirit. I came here with a faith message, but when I discerned the atmosphere, I discovered our labor tonight is a labor of alignment. The moment we align, the armies of Zion will file in in their ranks and men of order men of discernment those who have sensed the movements and the vibrations of god they will enter into an economy that is divine and on the strength of that economy possibilities that were factored into your destiny even before the foundations of the world will begin to find expression as we share the word of god tonight god will invade this building at any time i want to plead that you don't listen to me with your head listen with your heart because there's a movement in the spirit. But 
You see, when you engage a spirit that is holy, you must understand that there are definite courtesies for engaging the presence. The angels that have the privilege to vibrate before Yahweh Elohim, there is a courtesy that they understand. One of such courtesies is a courtesy of reverence. Another courtesy of standing before a spirit that is holy is the courtesy of honor. Another courtesy is a courtesy of expectation. If your heart is not full of expectation, you will walk past where creatures of glory are walking through and you will not connect with the energies of Zion. We are ascending the mountains of God. Those are not songs. They are chants of war. They are summons into heights of glory. They are not songs, brothers and sisters. Only men that make it to the top of the mountain will command the armies of God. They are certain that we not make it to the top. Life will not make so much meaning on ground. Hi, hi, hey. testimonies are opened up to you. I'm synchronizing with Zion. I'm waiting for the testimony. The utterance have not come. What we are doing is that we are entering deeper. I'm waiting. Let the tablets of the testimony be opened. You run, you run, you run.
Just go ahead and speak in tongues for one minute. Riba habora se vereniga para. Rapa pate se levone para. Reta talia za lemon na raba. Shabaka salia. Shabak. You get it? Reparano shabaka. Obre se se. Ayo se shabaka. Ayo shabak. Marediana shabaka. Omba pate sabo. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Abra Sonic Malahavis. Cezelia Mravina Hazak. Cezeli Barako Noboroniask. Ezezelia Kambaria Kamake. Zebegaberia Lamondre Havakaris. Rahabai Sakai. Veli Nase Savak. Ante Kira Parina. Arika Pake Sobaloda. Sarina Mahasevak. Sayande Parakos. Thank you, Father. Spirit of victory, the power of sweet your wings. Blow, blow, blow like a mighty wind. Spirit of victory, go on us with your wings. Blow, blow. Jesus. You see, the movements have begun. The movements have begun. God wants to drop utterance on the lips of some young men now. Some of you traveled in. Listen, the movements have begun. I'm seeing young people with graces that God wants to commission. But He said you need the utterance of the Spirit. The movements have begun. And so in the hall, and outside the hall, and even on the internet, I speak as a custodian of the oracles of God. Everyone with such ordination at this time, I stretch my hands in your direction. I say, take it in the name of Jesus. Barakomesh. Rekenia Sabak. Somebody has an utterance of deliverance outside. There's a power to cast out devils. It's upon your lips. And as I speak, the hand of God comes upon that one. Man, that ever Kazias, I've seen a tall young man. You came from the east. The hand of God is upon you. Your ordination is now. And I speak with the testimony of the fathers. Let such one receive that ordination. Man, that Kazias. Listen, I'm seeing a figure in the spirit. I'm seeing a figure, it's a number five. It's a number in the spirit. And the Lord said, wants to release grace on some persons, five of you. I can see somebody tall with a full hair that the hand of God is coming on right now by the spirit of God. And let the ordination begin. Everyone that is implicated by that utterance right now in the name of Jesus, let that grace rest upon you.
na 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 ie na 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 ie 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 na 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 ie 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 some of you are sensing heat on your chest now there is heat on your chest as if something is cooking so strong on your chest now now the holy ghost is removing something from somebody's abdomen now by the spirit of god now now by the spirit of god and every one of you sensing that heat on your chest run out quickly there's something for you it's a one minute ordination a heat on your chest is so hot Maria Cabanas you to make contact with this altar because the fire on this altar will fall upon you the fire the fire I didn't call you to lay hands but as you make contact with this premise now the fire on this altar it begins to rest upon you by the spirit of the living God you will go back changed you will go back with the word of the Lord on your lips you will go back as keepers of the heritages of God. You will go back as custodian of mysteries in the spirit. It's an ordination of God. And right now, precious Holy Spirit, as a sign, let the fire rest upon one of them. Let the fire rest upon one of them. Let the fire rest upon one of them. Thank you, Holy Spirit. There's a young lady somewhere around the middle of this hall. There's an oil floating in your hand now. You are sensing the sensation. It's an oil. It's an evangelical mantle floating upon your hand. Run out quickly. Let me drop something on you quick. Yeah, na 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 na. Yeah, na 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 na. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just stretch your hand. You don't need to come. Father, in the name of Jesus, that which you have allocated for her, I release it upon her now. Take in the name of Jesus. I release that man to upon you. Go and be a worker of miracles. In the name of Jesus, let the grace come upon you now by the hand of the Spirit of God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. 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 Let it bubble out of her by the hand of God. Thank you, precious Holy Spirit. And so let it be established according to the word of the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ thank you father thank you father thank you father in Jesus precious name amen you see God is out to bless us this night some of you are already being healed a pain has left somebody's right knee Check your leg now. A pain has just left. 
Nobody is praying for anybody. But God has gone ahead of us. A pain has left somebody's right knee. Check it, it's gone. By the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm sensing the hand of God come upon a young lady outside, somewhere around the back, outside of this building. You are a deliverance minister, and the hand of God is upon your life now. And that anointing will overwhelm you. You can't keep it. It will overwhelm you by the Spirit of God. It's a grace upon your life. precious name you can go back to your seat if you can God bless you I just stumbled into this wasn't part of the arrangement you may be seated God bless you Thank you, Father. Just play for me, please. Daniel chapter 11, verse 32. I'll just give a charge for about 20 minutes so Daddy will come up and minister to us by the Spirit. And such as do wickedly against the covenants shall be corrupt by flattery. But the people that do know their God, they shall be strong and do exploits. The people that do know their God, they shall be strong and do exploit. Every area of oppression in the life of a believer is an area of an ignorance of God of a dimension of his spirit the secret of preservation is captured on the strength of your knowledge of God every area of oppression in a man's life is an indicator of a possible ignorance of a dimension of God the people that do know their God so the question is not whether you have a God or not. I interact with a lot of people and you hear questions like, if God is there, why is this happening? The problem is not whether God is or not. The problem can be traced to your ignorance. I've gone through pains. I've gone through peri. Why would this be happening? If you say God is real, the problem is not the reality of God. What do you know about God? And what aspect of God do you know that can handle the obvious challenge in your life? Whatever it is that is a challenge is not even an argument whether you have a God or not. All have a God. But the ones that are strong and will do exploit are the ones that do know their God. Many have been deceived by the devil and ran the way of folly. And they call themselves atheists, arguing that there is no God because of challenges in their lives that they could not surmount. The problem is not with God. It is traced to their ignorance of a dimension in God that handles the plague of their lives. So it becomes the responsibility of every Christian to explore God in his lifetime. The greatest preoccupation of any entity in the realms of God is the pursuit of the knowledge of God. So Jesus comes in John 17 verse 3 and he summarizes life. He said this is life eternal that they may know him. It's not a function of what you have. It's a function of your knowledge because 
all things that pertain to life and godliness have been given to us but it is obtainable only through the ginosko of God. If there is a part of all things that pertains to life and godliness that is lacking in a man's life, the problem is not traced to God. It's traced to what he knows about God. This is life eternal that they may know him the only true God. But the devil is a wicked spirit. Part of the advantages that he has is the fact that he was a creature of the presence. He was a being of the presence. So he understands how to rob a generation of what they have in God. Because he understands the mysteries, the precepts, the patterns and the principles of God. He is a creature of the presence. He said, where were thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? When the sons of the morning sang for joy, they watched God carried out some feats of creation. So they understand some of the secret codes that are locked into this world. So when the devil wants to rob a generation of their inheritance, what he advertises to them are pathways that lead to ignorance. The challenge and the plague of the believer is the mountains of ignorance in his life. The moment you know a dimension of God that handles the problem you have, your problem becomes the past. And the reason we preach and keep preaching is to open up the portals of God so that men can know him and commune with his spirit. He said you were in Eden from the day of thy creation until iniquity was found in you. Until iniquity was found in you. He said out of the multitude of thy merchandise you corrupted thyself. So he knows what to do to be darkened. There is a multitude of a merchandise that brings about darkness of the soul and it comes to educate generations upon generations the way of darkness and we embrace it and we are separated from the commonwealth of Israel. So in Ephesians 4.18 he said we are alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in our hearts because we have been darkened even when the gospel is brought to them he said if our gospel be hid it is hid to them who are lost whom the God of this world have blinded what area of your heart is blinded it is an area that the devil will exploit and exploit again resolutions don't bring men to advantage it is the knowledge of God because knowledge does not bring knowing knowledge brings freedom he said and thou shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free the moment knowledge comes you don't know so much you become so free yeah. uh -huh. Uh -huh. you know our generation is losing out something we think we know so we come to talk the sign that you know is not what you say the sign that you know is the testimony of how much you have become like God because knowledge brings liberty the man that knows so much that is not the knowledge of God his head is lofty but the man that has the knowledge of God is so free so free that he can walk through darkness and it's as if darkness does not exist the psalmist said you lead me in the path of righteousness for your name's sake though I walk through the valley of the shadows of death the deepest darkness can no longer hold him back because he has acquired the knowledge that brings liberty Ah, 
ago an angel of the Lord came to me and he caught me up into the spirit and began to show me some of the things God wants to release to our generation and he said God wants to release grace, God wants to release strength and God wants to release wisdom he said grace is the ability that God is giving to this generation to live above death and corruption so we will be armed on the left and on the right to counter everything the devil is doing so the heads of many will be exalted like the horn of the unicorn the heads of many if that doesn't come upon you your life will be a struggle you don't do what you do because you are smart you do what you do because by divine politics you were ordained and when that grace comes upon your head whether the devil likes it or not you are exalted like the horn of the unicorn he said this is one of the spiritual commodities that is given to this generation and many have been numbered so the reason you begin to sense hunger to pray is not because you love prayer there is a wisdom from the mountains of zion that is sucking you to the place where you will interact with grace because that which god has to offer is on the mountain so blow the trumpet in zion sound an alarm upon his holy mountain so when that hunger comes to fast you are hearing the sound of a trumpet the angels that are part of your calling and were commissioned with you from Zion, they are beginning to suck your reality. So your spirit man begins to tell your natural man, come brother, there is a key on the mountain waiting. There is a key. It's a summon to deep places because only them who travel to the deep can see the wonders of God. Graces have been allocated. So angels creatures of heaven are wooing men to the presence. Wooing men, sucking them into prayer. It looks as if they are useless. Many are distracted with the pursuit of life. They are pursuing things because the devil brings anxiety as a burden and put on their shoulder. We don't run by speeding. We run by waiting. So it doesn't matter who moves first. The guy can labor and go forward. Wait for me. When I touch that grace, he said the hand of God came upon Elijah. He outran the chariots of Ahab. It doesn't matter if you are running on the chariot of the king. What is the grace on your head? When it comes, forget it. You will lead your generation. God is releasing graces. Many who are numbered, they are not aware. Somebody enters his room. He came from a church service. He still wants to pray. What you don't know is that before you came home, the angel was waiting for you. Because he knows that the journey to the top of the mountain is yet far. And you have not prepared enough. So you prayed in the morning, but you must pray in the night. Because you must touch that grace. It's an oil flowing from Zion. How many would that oil rest on their head? Kamash. Fedakarias. Kadagasigis. Mantekabaki Roparask. Mandaria Padesa Dagavis. Mekorina Hadak. The men that should change the fortunes of nations are here. But they don't know the value of grace. They don't know the things that were captured into the city. They don't know that even though the devil sent a plague, God has turned it out for our good. You were supposed to change Canada, but you are distracted by Chevron. So God says, sit at home. And the angels are wooing you every day. And then you end up on Big Brother Niger. He has seen you and he discovers getting to the top of the mountain. We take eight months. So he began in January. But you spent January to April watching a program. So even when you continue, you will not reach the top unless by mercy. We stand up, we say it's our generation, it's our generation. And we are on Facebook chatting from morning to night. We don't know. Gomash. I saw a vision in the spirit and it troubled me. I saw men that were in church for 10 years were there mastering activity. And I saw young people 
who just came in from outside overtook them and began to lead the generation I said God forbid we must be discerning to sense the summons of heaven a grace is coming and the second thing God is releasing is stamina so that men will finish strong because there are two kinds of darkness the first darkness stops the move of God the second darkness prevents the move of God from beginning he said and in those days the voice of God was cast this was a move that began with Samuel but Eli had destroyed it he said the voice of God was cast the lamp in the, in the sanctuary had gone off the move had died because no man to tend the presence moves die we run for meetings we receive impartations but their lifespan don't exceed three weeks and then we come to brag how many men have laid hands on us and who and who we snap pictures with it is the grace on your life that gives you an identity in zion What if you went to Zion and they told you you are the Elijah of your generation? And then when they check your profile, there was nothing like Elijah that reflected in your life because you didn't climb the ear of David to wear your garment. What is coming is heavy, but it's by grace, not by flesh. I know you are smart, I know you are intelligent, I know you are an orator, but orators are not needed. The wise are not needed. It is the graced, the engraced of God. They are the ones who are needed. And there's a place where men wear garments in glory. He said in Songs of Solomon, Solomon chapter 4, verse 4. He said, On the neck of the mountains of David are the shields of many warriors. coming the feeble will become mighty you will ask them how ah, it's a 400 broken and battered men came to david in the cave Adula. he doesn't need your strength the one you have to do with his name is called el shaddai he doesn't need your strength that's why god breaks men to use them so you lose your confidence in what you think you have it's not a, it's not an asset in the spirit broken and battered men they met david and when David was through with them, they were called the mighty men of David. Designation had changed because strength has come. It's part of our artillery. If all you have is your certificate, my brother, you can't stand the tide. It's a heavy one. You need stamina in the spirit. The Holy Spirit. Father, for the privilege to gather again.